The world has been waging war against bullying for 18 years. The world is losing. I've always had a knack for seeing simple things that most people don't notice and for coming up with simple solutions to problems. I began my career as a school psychologist and psychotherapist 40 years ago. I think I was subconsciously drawn to the therapy field because of my parents' relationship. My parents hated each other with a passion. They were both Holocaust survivors, and each of them would tell me that they escaped Hitler only to end up with their own personal Hitler. All of my parents' friends and relatives spent hours with them playing amateur psychologist trying to get to the root of their problems so they'll finally get along with each other. Everybody failed. When I began working, it quickly became obvious to me that the number one complaint of people is how others treat them. Everybody felt victimized by somebody in their lives and they didn't understand why this person kept on being mean to them. They're getting upset and they keep on treating them badly. I was lucky. Thanks to some things I learned in my psychology courses and in practical workshops on the job, I found I can use role playing very successfully to teach people why they were being tormented and how to make it stop. I didn't realize it at the time because I had never heard the word bullying being used in psychology before. But what I had become was an expert at teaching, how, teaching people how to stop being victimized, how to stop being bullied. Now, bullying today is very different from what it was when I was growing up. Bullying used to mean, give me your lunch money or I'll beat you up after school, or a big kid uh, beating up a smaller kid just for the fun of it. This is criminal behavior, it's assault and battery, it's extortion, this is illegal, people deserve to be protected from such behaviors, and those who commit it deserve to be punished. Today, bullying is being used to refer to all negative behavior. Anything that can upset anybody else is bullying. Most bullying is verbal, it's insults, name-calling, rumors, it's gestures like you know, sticking out your middle finger or eye-rolling. Eye-rolling is called bullying today. It's social exclusion, you can't sit at our lunch table. It's the normal uh, pushing and shoving that kids do to each other without injuring anybody. All of this is now bullying. Bullying is also being referred to a situation that's repetitive. If somebody picks on you once in a blue moon, that's no big deal. But if they're picking on you almost every day or every day, that really drives you nuts and that's called bullying. Please be aware that bullying does not only refer to kids in school. Bullying goes on in the lifetime, it happens at work, it happens within the family. In 18 years ago, there was an event that was so horrific that it shocked the world and changed the face of education. The Columbine High School massacre of April 20th, Hitler's birthday, 1999, made it impossible to ignore the fact that just about all school shootings are committed by victims of bullying. It was also well known that many children who commit suicide are victims of bullying. In just about every classroom and every school in the world, there are one or two kids who are being picked on every day by, these, by their peers, and these kids are absolutely miserable. But the United States and much of the world decided we had enough with these shootings, enough with suicides, we're going to declare war on bullying. There was this previously obscure, obscure field of psychology the bullying psychology that stepped up to the plate with the promise that they had the solution to bullying. Ultimately, their approach to the problem was adopted by every state 
of the union, this psychology became mandated by law. When I saw what this psychology teaches, I realized this can't possibly work. It's going to make everything worse. What they're doing is promoting a victim mentality. The very things that cause people to be bullied, they are presenting as the right thing to do. The philosophy behind the bullying psychology is you're entitled to a life in which nobody is repeatedly mean to you. If people are mean to you, please don't think it has anything to do with you. It's only because of them. If people are being mean to you, it is not your responsibility to do anything to make them stop. Just inform the authorities, and the authorities will make people stop being mean to you. There is no serious school of psychology or philosophy or religion in the world that teaches this approach to life. Anybody who lives like this is going to be miserable and have terrible relationships. What do we have to show for 18 years of bullying warfare, anti-bullying warfare? It's getting worse. Bullying is being called an epidemic. Children are committing suicide in record numbers. Parents are suing schools left and right for failing to stop their children from being bullied. Research has found that children are more likely to be bullied in a school that has an anti-bullying program than in a school that doesn't. Researchers have found that the most effective state anti-bullying laws reduce bullying complaints by about 20%. That's an 80% failure rate. I was trained to see the entire school as my client. If there's something bad for the entire school, it's going to be bad for the individual members of the school. Anti-bullying laws are about the worst thing that ever happened to schools. Anti-bullying laws don't make bullying magically disappear from a school. What they do is they hold the school legally responsible for making the bullying disappear. The laws make it easy for parents to sue schools for failing to stop their children from being bullied. These laws are holding the schools responsible for accomplishing the impossible. How can we hold schools responsible for making bullying stop when the programs and the laws don't work? Anti-bullying laws are a catch-22. The very effort to comply with them is likely to make the situation worse. The purpose of the anti-bullying psychology is to reduce hatred between people. This psychology, psychology is promoting hatred. There's a best-selling book for preschoolers called I Hate Bullies. Imagine from preschool you're being taught to hate bullies. I came across this poster on the internet that says, the only good bully is a dead one. You can say the most horrific things about bullies today, and it's perfectly okay. Anti-bullying laws are transforming schools from educational institutions into totalitarian police systems. Children have lost all privacy. Everything that children say and do to each other is now the business of the schools. And not only during the school day, 24-7. Schools are instructing children that if they're bullied or if they witness bully, bullying, they have to inform the school authorities. So children are being uh, instructed to be spies and informers on each other. Today, if a child complains that they're being bullied, the school has to conduct an investigation. It has to interrogate all of the children involved. It has to look for witnesses. It has to interrogate teachers. They have to meet with the parents of the children involved. They're supposed to write out detailed reports about the bullying and their investigation and the judgment and file it with the school district. 
Processing a single bullying complaint can easily take 10 or more hours of staff time. Time that can be used for education. This is a very time and money consuming uh, process. And the investigation process doesn't stop the bullying, it makes it worse. Because let's say you insulted me. I tell the teacher on you and you get sent to the principal's office for bullying me. Are you going to admit that you're guilty? If you're like most people, you're going to defend yourself and blame me. Are you going to like me better if I get you investigated? You're going to hate me. You're going to try to turn all of your friends against me. You're going to tell them that I'm a snitch. You're going to try to do something worse to me afterwards. Then I'll tell on you again, and you'll be investigated again, and you're going to become more angry at me. You now feel like you're a terrible victim of me because what I did to you is much worse than what you did to me. And the more I get you investigated, the more the hatred between us builds up, and it may even lead to serious violence. If you carefully read the news stories about bullying that led to serious violence, you will see that it almost always happened after the school authorities got involved trying to make the bullying stop. But the idea of an anti-bullying law sounds so good that when the laws don't work, everybody thinks the solution is to toughen up the laws instead of getting rid of them. Now, does this mean there's no hope that we're stuck with this bullying epidemic? Not at all. There is a solution to bullying, and it's been known for thousands of years. It's almost effortless. It takes up almost no staff time so that the teachers can spend their, times, their time teaching instead of judging and punishing. The solution is for the school to stop acting like a law enforcement agency and be an educational institution. Children don't go to school to be protected from reading and writing and science and social studies. We have to help them master the academic challenges of life. Life has social challenges. Bullying goes on throughout the lifetime. Children deserve to be taught how to handle it. The solution to bullying has been known for thousands of years and is called the golden rule. This is treat others the way you want them to treat you. The truth is many bullying programs declare that they promote the golden rule, but they fail to reduce bullying because they think that the golden rule means don't be a bully, you have to be nice to people. We don't need the golden rule for such an obvious message that we shouldn't be mean to people and we should be nice to people. It's self-evident that it's wrong to be mean and it's good to be nice. Does anybody here have a hard time getting along with people who are nice to you? Anybody? It's easy to get along with people when they're nice. The problem is, what do you do when they're mean to you? That's the hard part. The golden rule is not about not being a bully, it's about not being a victim. It teaches how not to be a victim. What do you do when people are mean to you? And the answer is, be nice back to them. But this is the hard part because it's against our nature to be nice to people who are mean to us. A lot of people think that this is a recipe for losing. The golden rule is a recipe for winning and it creates a win-win situation. This is the way it works. Human beings are programmed for reciprocity. It means we treat others the way they treat us. If you think about it, you'll realize we're all like this. Who here feels in your gut like being mean to people who are nice to you? Anyone, any psychopaths here? No, we feel like being nice back. Who here feels in your gut like being nice to people who are mean to you? We feel like being mean back. We can control it, 
But this is what our guts tell us, to be nice to those who are nice to us and mean to those who are mean to us. But if I live like this today, I have very little control over my relationships. If you're nice to me, I'll be nice back to you and we'll be friends. But if you're mean to me, I'll be mean to you and we'll be enemies. So I tell myself, what do I need enemies for? I want people being my friends. I know that you're programmed for reciprocity just as I am. So even if you're mean to me, I'm going to be nice to you. And before long, you're going to start being nice to me because you're programmed to treat me the way I treat you. The most common form of bullying is verbal. It's insults. And even the great majority of physical fights begin with words. So if you know how to deal with verbal attacks, most physical aggression also is avoided. The solution to verbal bullying is freedom of speech. Anti-bullying laws have repealed freedom of speech. They have made it a crime to say anything that could offend anybody else. But it's because the bullying experts believe that freedom of speech makes bullying possible. No, freedom of speech is the solution to bullying. Freedom of speech is mandated by the golden rule. Just like we want to feel free to say what we want without people getting angry at us and punishing us, we have to let other people say what they want, no matter how much we don't like it, without getting angry at them and punishing them. I'm going to demonstrate how the golden rule and freedom of speech are the solution to verbal bullying. I'm going to do this with the help of Bill, who spoke earlier. I'm going to be doing an improvisational role play with him. This is not rehearsed. He does not know what to expect. Uh, Bill, where are you? Okay, there you are. Uh, Bill, let's say I'm gay. I op I'm openly gay. I've come out of the closet. And you hate gay people with a passion. And you're going to insult me for being gay. And don't let me stop you. Go ahead. Dude, I just heard you were gay. Is that true? Yeah, I'm gay and I'm proud of Damn, it. Damn, dog, you're unnatural, man. What do you mean I'm unnatural? What does that mean? It means you're unnatural. It means you're unnatural? Not... What are you talking about? People have been gay throughout history. I don't care about that. You're not like the rest of us. You guys are... Not like the rest of us. I'm human being just like you, you are. Got... You're nasty. You do I'm nasty. I'm not nasty. What are you talking about? I'm not nasty. You do, na you do nasty things. I don't do nasty stuff. What is it? Loving another human being is nasty? How can you call that loving another human being? It's, it's loving not... another human being. It's not nasty. It, it's unnatural. It's completely natural. In your world, maybe, but not in the rest of ours. In this world, you're behind the times. There's nothing wrong with being gay. Dude, you're from okay, another planet. Okay, good plan. job, good job. Very nice. Don't go away, don't go away. Uh, Bill, did I make you want to stop calling me gay? No. Could you respect me for my behavior? With difficulty. With difficulty. Was I making you have more respect for gay people in general? No. I'm confirming the way you feel about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Would you want to be my friend if I treat you this way? Probably not. Yeah. You're just confirming everything that I supposedly didn't like in the first place. Right. Now we're going to do it again, and this time I'm going to treat you like a friend and give you freedom of speech. Put me down all you want for being gay. Go ahead. You know, I've never liked gay people. I don't know where they come from. I, 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 I just don't get it. You, you, yeah. you folks are... I, I, I don't get it, man. I, I don't know where the hell you people come from. I know. You know, when I think about what it's like to be straight, I find it kind of disgusting, too. <laughs> well, I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 yeah, know you how know, you I feel. mean, it's, it's, maybe it's not, yeah. it's, not as dis well, yeah. it's not as disgusting as what you guys do. Uh, I know. I can understand why you feel that way. But you know what, Bill? It's so tough to be gay. Uh, Bill, do you know what the difference is between being gay and being black? Oh, boy. <laughs> in, in some, some respects, respects, in terms of the general public at large, probably not a whole lot of difference. I'll, I'll tell you. If you're black, you don't have to tell your parents. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> Very good, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Bill, do you Bill, like, like me you better this way? Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe you're not so bad after yeah. all. Yeah. So maybe I, I got a new BFF. Right. So I will turn you into a less prejudiced person all by myself if I treat you like a friend and give you freedom of speech. Now, the first time we role played, it looked like I was trying to stop you from putting me down for being gay. I wasn't stopping you. I was making you do it even more. Yes, you were. I was making you defeat me. I was looking like a fool. You're having a great time. You were egging me on. Exactly. The second time, I let you insult me. I did nothing to stop you. And then you wanted to stop. You felt foolish putting me down. But now you like me and you want to be my friend. You took the wind right out of my yeah. sails. So freedom of speech is the solution to verbal bullying. Uh, thank you very much. We'll give him a round of applause. Bullying goes on throughout the lifetime. Children deserve to be taught how to deal with it. It's so easy. We just have to do it in the right way and stop teaching them to think like victims. Thank you.